said it's interesting that the uh, the media is not reporting the actual gains we made in some of the red wall seats like my own we we won a seat in ashfield for the first time in history and uh, next door in mansfield we the uh, the number of conservative tory sorry the number of tory councils went from two to five uh that's a massive increase and now the official opposition in mansfield on mansfield council and over in bassett law i think we're getting two or three Tory councillors as well. So, you know, it's not it's this this picture that we're seeing. Yes, it's, it's an awful sight on, on, on Friday seeing over a thousand councillors losing their jobs, obviously. But in, in some of the red wall areas like mine, we've actually made, made gains. So that encourages me. And I've always said, Patrick, that a lot of the red wall voters are working class voters, if you like, voted Conservative for the first time in 2019. Three reasons, really. Boris Brexit and Jeremy Corbyn. They're looking for an excuse to vote for us again. And if we get things right over the next year or so, then they will vote for us again. So I'm quite quietly confident that in areas like mine, we'll retain these seats. I get that. But I mean, I'm looking at other areas, though, like Stoke-on-Trent, Jonathan Gullis's uh, area is another regular on this channel. They yeah. were <laughs> obliterated, really, it's fair to say. And, and I yeah. just wonder whether or not it is now because the Tories are losing them as opposed to Labour offering something in particular. And I just wonder whether or not, Lee, it is more of a question of competence and trust because yeah. you know, the big one, you know, stop the boats, that's not happening. It's not. I mean, you're quite right. I think you're, I think you're half right there, Patrick. I think, I think people are fed up not just with the main political parties, they're fed up full stop. I mean, look at the turnout at the local elections, mm. Last week, in some parts of Ashfield, just 20 odd percent. You know, I think you're lucky anyway in the country to find over 30 percent. So, 70 percent of the of the actual electorate are not going out to vote. So, they're a little bit fed up. And you're quite right about the small votes. It seems to be taking an age. <clears throat> I am encouraged by Rishi because for the first time since I've been an MP, Rishi and Suella has, have given us something that no previous leadership gave us, and that was. If you arrive here illegally, you will not be able to claim asylum. You'll be swiftly re um, detained and returned to either your own country or, or a third country like Rwanda. So that gives me hope. Yes, it winds me up. It's frustrating it's taking so long. But you know what? <clears throat> In over a year's time, the, the British electorate have got a decision to make. Who do you want running this country and this economy? Do you want Rishi and Jeremy Hunt or Sakia? and Angela Rayner. And I think once people go into the ballot box and look at those names on the paper, they'll make the right decision. Yeah, but I think you can fit a Rizzler paper between the kind of economics, to be honest with you, at the moment, depressingly, from what's coming out of Jeremy Hunt's mouth and what may well come out of the Labour Party's mouth. And, and at the moment, you know, the Labour Party's obviously got rid of Jeremy Corbyn in the kind of wacky magic grandpa element of it, which I think turned a lot of people off, especially, especially in the north of England, right? It just did. So you've not got that now. So if they're looking at it and thinking, well, neither party is going to make me richer. At the next election, I am not going to be able to say that voting Tory is going to make me richer. Then they might as well just go and do what their dad did and their granddad did and just vote Labour. Well, you know, um, you know, Rishi is, is no mug, Patrick. This is a man who was, you know, in 2015 came into Parliament and now is a Prime Minister of this great country. He's a very clever man. He, he's a businessman. He's got a, a good head on his shoulders. And yes, we have been spending a little bit too much money over the past few years with the pandemic, obviously the war in Ukraine uh, and the tax situation is not is not ideal. We're supposed to be a low low tax party. That's what we want to be. But I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident, confident now that Rishi has steadied the ship that, uh, you know, throughout this year uh, and early next year, with there will be tax cuts, they, we, uh, we will be telling, you know, selling the conservative dream to the, to the great British people. And then what is that dream, Lee? Year, Lee, just, just sell it, sell it yeah, now. Not, just sell um, it now, all right? I, wanna, I, want, I want to talk directly to working-class yeah. people, not, not just in the north of England, but this is where yeah. the Red Wall gets a lot of coverage, right? But yeah. working-class people everywhere who voted for you at the last election, who have just gone out and voted Labour in the local elections, or dare I say it, even Lib Dem, or Green in some cases. I mean, that was like the ultimate protest vote, wasn't it? Sell the Tory dream to those people. Well, well, they haven't, Patrick. I think you're wrong in what you just said there. A lot of, you know, they're not going back to, to the Labour Party, the Conservative, the first-time Tory voters. I speak to them on a daily basis. I live in the real world, as you well know. And they're, yes, they're a little bit grumpy. Yes, they're a little bit fed up. But they're saying to me, come on, Lee, get your party to get the act together. We want to vote for you again next year. They're not going out at the local election last year and switching, vote, switching votes from, from Labour to Conservative. I suspect that many of our voters last week actually started to stay at home. Um, and and, and that's, a, that's a sad truth, Patrick. But if you want to sell the Conservative dream, the Conservative dream is quite simple. 
It's putting more money in people's pockets. And if we get that right next year with tax cuts and you know, incentives for small businesses, etc., then we should be okay. I, I, I absolutely believe that 100%.